I, I think we only got a little little bit of time left, so let's get the Battlesmith down real quick. Yeah, let's go ahead and, and run through the Battlesmith. I know we've got a lot of questions in chat, and we'll do our best, best at the end of this. So, uh, Battlesmith, this is more of that front lines, fightery type artificer. Mm -hmm. uh, They're this kind is of paladin-ish. Very, very paladin-ish, especially when we look at third level, you get these spells as the Battlesmith. You get heroism. This kind of mm -hmm. boosts the rest of the people around you. Shield, branding, smite. So now you're a smiter. You mm have -hmm. warding bond, which is really great to put on your companions, great but for you tanking. also get something else mm -hmm. later that could benefit from this. You got the aura of vitality, conjure barrage. You've got aura of purity, fire shield, vanishing smite, and mass cure wounds. You are kind of that um, battle ward out there i mean you really are the battlesmith but you are out there kind of like doing a little bit of healing on top of everything yeah. else buffing your party at the same time um you're not one trick pony you're not strictly <laughs> all martial offense this is a class and subclass for someone to play if they can't decide whether or not they want to play artificer paladin or ranger and we'll get to <laughs> why in a second uh, not only does your battle ready feature give you proficiency with martial weapons yeah. and it lets you attack with your intelligence instead of strength and dexterity yep but you also get a steel defender you can create a faithful companion that uh fights with you in combat uh can move and use reaction on its own um uh, but you can use a bonus action to command it to dash disengage attack help hide search you can heal it with your mending so <laughs> this is an artificer who gets a lot of paladin like spells and martial weapons mm -hmm. and gets an almost beast master like companion you're incredibly versatile and while that means that some of your abilities as we'll see going down don't get you quite as like deep as a full paladin or a ranger or a, a more like uh, alchemist style artificer would go uh you certainly get a incredible breadth of ability here yeah and uh, the, the the steel defender is nothing to sneeze at though not as high an armor class as say you know uh what the artillerist artillerist mm -hmm. gets uh you got the, you know the might of the master this this thing can repair itself um it gets a bonus to uh you know it's it's hit and damage it does scale with you but what's interesting is things like deflect attack you know mm -hmm. the defender can pose disadvantage on an attack roll on one creature it can see that is within five feet of it that's really that's really fantastic yeah. to uh, help buff you or a party member as well it can do some damage with force empowered rend and that damage scales but i don't really feel like that the intention of the steel defender is that it's mm -hmm. mainly like the fact it can never be surprised it's mm -hmm. a great lookout yeah, right. this, this thing is, it's got a little bit of attack going on for it, but really you're using this thing to uh, get damage away from your party members, to protect people, to, to tank for them. You're, you're, a, you're a tanky guy with some healing and a pet as well. Let's just yeah. go through some of the rest of their features. Fifth level is straightforward. It's extra attack, like you'd see on a fighter, paladin, or ranger. Attack more times. Um, at ninth level, you're going to get arcane jolt that lets you channel arcane energy to harm or heal. Uh, when either you hit a target with a magic weapon attack or your steel defender hits a target, you can channel extra force damage through it, or you can cause healing energy to flow uh, from the target into a friend of yours. You can only use this number of times per day equal to your intelligence modifier. Very, very tanking focused. Uh, and, and interesting too, because I love kind of like, again, your intelligence modifier replaces your dex or your strength. I mean, like, is do you have a chainsaw sword? Are you like, <laughs> what is the invention you made to cause this to happen? So that's very fun. Um, the extra 2d6 is nothing to sne sneeze at. And this doesn't in interfere with anything like s using a bonus action to smite, right? Nope. And the, it turns your still defender into kind of like that weird cartoon dog that had like, what was it like hot soup? I don't remember what was under its chin. Brandy. Like if you're, if you're in an <laughs> avalanche. <Yeah>. You know, <laughs> so the, the rescue dog with a, with a barrel full of brandy <laughs> all around its collar. It seems yeah. so unwise. Uh, yeah. So, so the still defender becomes a, a little bit better at buffing the party. So, yeah. Um, and finally, their capstone, the improved defender. Uh, their damage, the damage and healing of your arcane jolt improves to four d six instead of two. Nah, your steel not defender, bad. yeah, not bad at all. Uh, your steel defender gets a plus two bonus to its AC. Not bad either. 
Um, and whenever it uses its deflect attack feature, the attacker takes extra force damage, 1d4 plus your intelligence modifier. Now, that's lovely, because, boy, there's not... There's not like necessarily a ton of times in D&D where there's no save and someone's just taking taking damage. But I mean, that's what's great. You're just causing this person to take damage because they're attacking. Mm-hmm. And again, get, you know, being able to cause disadvantage is so it, it's is already great on top of everything else. But a little yeah. extra damage on top of that, a little bit more of a hellish rebuke uh, from your steel defender. Um, it's pretty nice. It's nice. It's scalable. And you're totally right. I didn't realize... It until you said it but this is like if you don't know if you want to play a paladin a ranger <laughs> and what else artificer. <laughs> or an artificer <laughs> we we have the subclass for you uh i think this is really fun i would spend a lot of time thinking about what my still defender looks like mm-hmm. um for me i envision a big kind of uh dopey robot um i know uh, some people envision big steel dogs you know, uh, you, you could think of a lot of weird uh, kind of constructs uh, for your steel defender that might be fun. Um, and maybe you talk to it. Maybe you have conversations with the steel defender. It has an intelligence of four, so it's probably going to be pretty basic conversation. <laughs> but, you know, it's like talking to an Alexa. Um. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great comparison. <laughs> Sometimes you ask it things and it doesn't quite hear you right. Uh, but it's really fun and it's it's a it's a great artifice or subclass i have not personally played it but this is a strong spell list it's a strong list of abilities and we still have time i don't know how that's possible shall we blitz through some questions from chat before we have to go yeah let's run through it <laughs> hey chat thanks for uh hanging with us uh we had a giveaway i'm very excited about that Ooh, lots of questions that's terrifying all right it's gonna be speed round now a uh, question about the artificer making boots of elven kind and such at higher levels is there a defined limit on how rare an item they can make at any given level there are limits when it comes to what's in the dm's guide but not when it comes to your infusions those are implied later you'll have a list of infusions and magical items that you can recreate as you level up as an artificer so once you hit sixth level you can make like gloves of thievery and boots of elven kind once you hit certain higher levels you can make much more powerful magical items so that's how yeah. it works so um, there's there's guidance there's guidance within the sub subclass about what you can make yeah these tables if you look at them there's kind of a rough delineation of power level but like there are uncommon magic items on the second sixth and tenth level table and then some rare ones on the 14th level table these things are, are broken down not necessarily by rarity um but you can use rarity as kind of a rough guideline if you want to add new infusions onto here don't add anything higher than uncommon um until you reach that final 14th level table basically. yeah and i could see that i, I could see the case for that and, mm-hmm. and there are magical items that are well n- where you're not replicating something you're making something entirely unique a type mm-hmm. of homunculus mm-hmm. a repulsing shield which is great by the way <laughs> if you're the battlesmith and you don't have the repulsing shield i don't know what you're doing uh, you're knocking people back 15 feet. That is really, really cool. Um, on top of this, you've got like uh, items of returning, which you can't yeah. find that in D and D. So you can get an a throwing axe of returning that comes back to you every time. That becomes super fun and strange to me. Um, that maybe you're smiting with. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, Shall we take another? another? Yeah, yeah. We got another question. Can you use Flash of Genius on death saves? No, you cannot. I don't think you can. I don't think you can give the per- person a bonus to their death save, can you? Uh, flash of genius saving throw. Death saves are saving throws. Yes. Oh, crap. Yep. Wow. Okay. There are very few things that give things uh, bonuses to death saves, but that is one of them. Okay. All right. I stand corrected. Maybe you just yell at someone while they're dying, and they're like, nope, all right, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> are there suggestions you would give someone who is playing an artificer for the first time in a campaign or one shot? Um, really, I would really think about flavor. I would mm-hmm. really analyze your um, combat can be kind of tricky with with an artificer like an artillerist because you're dealing with like don't don't forget about your eldritch cannon versus your arcane firearm. Um, you you do have we are looking at a pet class essentially when it comes to the steel defender as well. It requires a lot of knowledge. Like these are very complex subclasses and classes to me. Um, yeah. 
Uh, so it does take a, you know, give yourself time. You're going to be in combat. You're going to be role playing with this. <laughs> Once you get flash of genius, don't ever forget it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that is like a strong ability and really mix it up. Look at, look at the strange things you can do with some low level stuff. Um, my, my advice is just try and remember all the stuff you can do. Artificer is a very, very complex class. Yeah, look at those magical rep, the magical items you can replicate can really customize that character. You can become mm -hmm. the stealth character, like mm -hmm. the best stealth character, just by making certain magical items. Yeah, um, you can plan ahead. I mean, when you look at that list of you know items you can replicate, it can get very interesting. So, uh, another question: My experience of playing the Battlesmith was it felt like it took a while to start doing a lot of things I wanted to do as an artificer. Level 7, the Flash of Genius, um, and then level 9, Arcane Jolt. What should I be expecting for gameplay um, in an artificer at early levels? I feel I feel like it's pretty strong, actually. If you get Steel Defender right away. I, I think what you might be feeling when it comes to the Battlesmith is that wide breadth, but uh, slightly more shallow depth of power, which is a, a trade-off that you make with that class, is that you can do a whole lot, but don't expect to be doing it quite as well as a Paladin or a Ranger or uh, even other types of artificers. Um, and, and find a way to lean in to that jack-of-all-trades mentality, and you'll find yourself being able to do a lot. Yeah, and remember, you you are a spellcaster, but you can also you're if you're attacking with one of your weapons, that's two attacks at fifth level. You get that at fifth, sixth level, you get some far more powerful yeah. uh, infusions, and then seventh level, you get flash of genius. You're pretty loaded with stuff. Yeah. and then a bonus action to command your uh, defender to do stuff. Yeah, I feel like you got a lot going on. Um, it just kind of depends on uh, the DM that you're running with and and the combat the combat situations you're you're, you're engaged in. I think mm. that's part of it. But yeah, I mean, with anyone that's not a full caster, um, if if you're more focused on the spells, it can feel like things aren't happening super fast for you. But um, the the fun is the journey. That's that's my big sage advice. Um, does artillery still work with school of evocation wizards? that keep the friendliest safe. Uh, I would have to look at the reading for the evocation wizard. Oh, you're talking about like sculpt spell where you yeah. can pause. It's an interesting dip. I, I wonder if there are synergies there. I'm not 100% sure on that. Good question. Let me do a quick little dive into the player's handbook and see what sculpt spells, other creatures. So um, rules as written, no. You can protect creatures, not objects. Your turret is an object, not a creature. But I can't imagine why any DM would rule that you can't protect your turret using sculpt spells. It, it seems like just a thing you should be able to do. Yeah, so that flamethrower, okay, yeah, I agree. Yep, yeah, that makes sense. Um, it doesn't break the game either way. No, um, no this is not a game-breaking thing. If, it, if, if you give it legs, can't be tripped, I would say no. I, I think they're, they're pretty much immune to the prone condition. They're immune to prone? Yep. And so, like, think about how that would happen, right? They're not going to get tipped on their back like a turtle. They've got legs that can kind of tip them up easily. They're like a, <laughs> like a weeble. I would, yeah, I, yeah, they're a weeble wobble. They never, <laughs> they, they never, never fall, fall down. down. Or they just grow more legs. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, it's like the, the chassis just like rotates. And it, yeah. Away it goes. Yeah. It, it's kind of. It could be quite horrifying. How does the force ballista, ballista interact with the spell sniper feet? It doesn't. Yeah. It's not it's a spell. Not a spell. Um, another question, can you make your arcane firearm look like anything or will it always look the same? Uh, you can make it look like anything. Flavor it, baby. Yeah. yeah. Uh, question, can you make a cannon with wings? You can, they just won't work. <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> you can have a walk on those wings. Buddy. I worked in an antique clock shop. I never saw a cuckoo clock fly away. Um, <laughs> I, I, you know what, you know what though, I would bet that if you wanted to, you could barter away some other cannon abilities for the ability to fly at a certain speed, right? Maybe instead of being able to explode, it can fly instead. You know, that's the sort of like homebrew at the table you can do with your DM to fine tune the class in a way you want it to. Yeah, this, James Hake has written many D and D books and DMs quite a bit, and he weirdly enough encourages people to barter with their dm more than i would ever even <laughs> <laughs> and i, love, I, barter with I love the it DM often um 
with some a lot of shenanigans. So that's a uh, that's very encouraging words from James Hake. <laughs> uh, for an NPC character who's literally just created guns in, in a world, what subclass would you recommend? Um, I mean, for an NPC character who's literally created guns in a uh, world, artillerist for sure. Yes, the artillerist. Mm-hmm. Uh, question: Could a small creature use their still defender? as a mount now i have also we all thought about this here's here's the bit about that um i believe it takes its action after directly after you am i wrong um much it like can, the, it can ma- move and use its reaction on its own i you know i i oh, think, can i think that it would be very cool for a no artificer to ride a steel defender into battle that I makes would perfect love it. sense i yeah. just thought that it i thought the steel defender itself takes its action immediately after you take so it action. it takes its action when you use a bonus action to command it but it can move and react uh all on its own ah uh, interesting okay mm-hmm. okay yep. uh, i was thinking more like the drake you know flying around with it but like mm. at the end of the day you know yeah i could see someone going a little bit into cavalier you know what? if you're trying that hard for that fancy of being a gnome on top of a steel you know dragon horse or whatever uh, at some t- at some point, the DM you should let them. Yeah, let them yeah. do what they want. Lean into it. Take mounted combatant. Do it, all that fun stuff. They're not going to kill Vecna on their own. <laughs> like you know, this is not going to break anything. So, wow, we got through all the questions. Um, wow, good work. I know it's a speed round, everyone, but uh, we're big fans of the artillerists. I highly recommend them for uh, just about everybody. There's a lot to dig in there i am very excited for the artificer armor we will be delving into that once tasha's comes out and we'll have all the updates to that particular one uh i'm a huge fan of that um thank you so much to our lead writer james hake he has written many a dnd tome he has encounters of the week he's got class 101s on dnd beyond uh he basically has all the information you need uh to jump into dnd and expand your dnd universe he's also a fantastic friend so uh I, i'm todd kenrick this was our todd talks probably misnamed at this point uh thank you so much for watching thank you pre-order tasha's cauldron of everything on DD beyond and unlock exclusive pre-order rewards including digital dice